Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the 25.5 chassis build. We got subframe connectors installed last time and now we're gonna start working on some new bars for inside. So I'm actually over here, my dad's over there and he's gonna help me build this bar here. So he's done quite a bit of chassis work and he's actually built a Camaro that's back there that maybe one day you guys will see. But uh, we got the two bender already out. Some inch and five eighths chromoly here, which is what the uh, chassis cert book calls for and so I have a chest cert book right here so we're just following along that red bar any red bar is inch and five eighths 083 chromoly that's what we're gonna do huh are you sure no nope. <laughs> you're just saying it's a bunch of guesswork anyway right that's all it is so. guesswork these are just pictures this is suggestions like they have certain dimensions and obviously set back for the helmets so what, what bars they require what bars they like to see for some you can always overbuild them but nobody wants to overbuild <laughs> we're trying to save weight here just adds <laughs> yeah. weight so you try to follow the the these are recommendations is what the way i look at it the more the true definition is what you read within the the, the print and some of it matters right like that car has a full floor in it that car you took some of the floor out to put some of the stuff in so it all depends on how the car's kind of set up and what you got to do to well make it work. yeah what is required by the rocker panel that you removed, how much of it you removed, how much of the floor you removed, the transmission tunnel. Unibody car, frame rail car, right. There's all so that stuff, many yeah. levels. So you almost got to read it and then come back and try to start decipher and your car, what you're doing, what ET you're shooting for. You're not overbuilding it, but you're not underbuilding it, so you get rejected. A lot of this, everybody gets freaked out on the what they're building and stuff but honestly it's pretty straightforward once you read it you kind of get an understanding go to the track look at some other cars it, it kind of makes sense talk to some people there's so much with the internet not a lot of this that you'll find people have shared which is amazing but yeah so that's i mean that's kind of what we did with like the subframe connectors that i got uh steven over there at rock solid builds a bunch of these cages so i kind of hit him up he's like yeah these will work for the frame rails and then we looked at the book and my dad's like yeah so we can do this and that and kind of you know put our own version of this thing together but there are specific bars people will look for and they got to check and if you've never done a chassis inspection they check the thickness of the bars they check to make sure they kind of follow this along but different cars it's, it's just kind of weird so you gotta like you said the you, weights <laughs> of the cars yeah like that's what depends on your sfi and if you ever want to possibly approach. go like further yes. then like there's a couple bars in the car and oh well the back bar if you guys remember we cut that one out because now that one's not okay for this chassis but it was okay for the 750 but now bars like this are going in <laughs> to make it okay for the 750 so that's what we're here doing today is getting started on the chassis and like i said we already got started so for quite a few years you used a hand bender but now you got right. a pneumatic one here that you you runs off bender. electric i've done an awful lot of stuff just by eye because i've done so much of it over the years this one here we're, we're started with a 75 degree bend found the tube found our offset off like come over three and a half inches so we're trying to make the center of the uh, 75 degree bend which is not a true 75 because of the spring back but that's what it says on here comes here and then we'll take it out turn it and then we'll offset the bends back the other way so we'll have our bar to carry over the hump come down tie into our chassis and keep it as low as possible so we can put the rocker bars or the bars down to our lower frame rails come up for the funny car because yeah. you have some give and take with this because your funny car bar ties to it but if you want to keep a low it's good for access if you're getting in and Into out the back of the car or whatever yeah it but, could stay high but yeah people put intercoolers back there for their eye like so and it, it, that's what i mean everybody's got so many options with yeah there, there's give and take to these things as long as you've got the main thing <laughs> and you're within the parameters it's it's pretty good yeah so as you guys notice we didn't start with like putting a fish mouth or anything in there so we get the bar real close and then we'll mark it and then fish mouth it right yeah because what it is on the factory cars when you're making the the tunnels they're usually out like the motors are offset right and stuff as well as the transmission the drive shafts rear ends so that's what you always got to watch when you're trying to work with the floor pan you don't just take the center of what the floor pan is you measure make sure you carry side to side measurements because they do change in length like this one here measured out 26 to one side 25 yeah we can find the true center but when you're trying to carry your bar over the top and center over your drive shaft hump you're stuck with <laughs> you that being your that. center point not a true center point of what what we would consider 
a center line of your chassis like a tube chassis car. These, if we was doing F bodies every day. Easy enough, right? It's yeah. easy enough because then you know you're offset and it's doing it and that's just where it's gonna be. But when we gotta keep the floor pan, then we're there again. It's stuck by one thing, <laughs> yeah. stuck by another. The bins don't have no effect on them. It has to be just one piece from driver's side to the passenger side on this lower bar to meet this spec here. I'll show you guys kind of what we're shooting for. And it's, it's pretty simple, but it's like one of the main bars that everything ties to is that lower bar. It's gonna shoot kind of right across here, go up and over the hump, and then it ties into that side over there. So that becomes kind of the main back bar here. And then later on, we're gonna add a rocker bar that comes up here. So you start kind of building the floor to the cage, if you will, that kind of bottom brace. And then because it's a full unibody and we have the full floor in the car, it does save us from putting quite a bit of like X bracing into the floor. So it's really nice when you can keep the full floor of the car. When I started to do all my inputs into my bender to my program, and I was like, screw that shit, I'm just wasting a bunch of molly, I'll just start bending them. But anyway, some of them ended up, so I was marking them, you count your spring back to actually what your degrees your bend is, so it knows on your 5 eighths how much spring back it is at a 90 degree bend, yada yada. So there's a lot to input into the bender, which a lot of them, you're only gonna carry a certain amount of bends, so that's really all you gotta know. It's not like you gotta know every single degree. There's give and take, but like this, these are my cheat sheets. So I know where I got my line. This lines up with my center line on my bender. And then this is a, say a 75 degree. So I can put it up in there. And I've done this before where I create my bars. I mean, this is a drastic. Well, I don't know. I've seen people do this hokey <laughs> shit around a dash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've definitely seen that around a so, dash and then it has a big old like soft spot to bend it. So you see, so you got a line, you could do a 90. If this one's got a bend over here, you'd tack weld it and boom, you've already created your bar. They're just a template around. at this point, yeah. Yeah, they were templates and thrown around, so I just kept them. Now I can build templates into the car, like if you get into a crazy thing where it's bending around them and stuff, like trying to go through the dash on this one. This one was pretty wild because it was steel dash. I didn't remove the dash. And it's super tight. I had a hole, so I created the bar first, put it in there, had everything, just like if I was on the computer. Yeah, you kind of start piecing it. It's kind of like that yeah. kit that you see where people build like uh, headers, right? Like those right. little blocks yeah. to build headers same, it's the same idea same idea if you're going to do it in uh mild steel create your bins in mild steel because they're going to carry the same bins the same offset spring same back spring and all backs. that stuff yeah i'm like, not a computer person i'm a visual person i can come out here i can figure it out there's my dimensions here's my offset i'll cut it off put it in there what's the worst thing i did is go what 50 inches of chrome molly these days that could be a small fortune. Well, yeah, it's a retirement <laughs> fund. <laughs> With still prices, but no, like you said, it's you know. It's gonna be an offset right here. You're still gonna have some pieces. We gotta drop down from this bar down to the main frame rails. You got other pieces throughout the car. Yeah. So it's not like you've completely Yeah, you'll lost. end up using them up. Yeah, it's not so, wood. Yeah, people don't be afraid. That's, that's how I got into this stuff. They make plenty of steel. Yeah, it costs a little bit these days, but. What's cost of learning? Yeah, what's, how much are you gonna pay to go to school? <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Probably one of the best tools that he has in the shop though is this like hand bandsaw. This thing cuts so nice and no sparks, no nothing. You can cut right yeah. by a car. This thing is, and it's super true and flat. This thing's worked awesome. And we usually just touch off that little burr on the uh, sander and that's it. Uh -huh. I do. Well, depends on who's building. <laughs> so I'll show you guys uh, while he sands that. I came over the other day and I've been working on getting all the bracing out in here. So still working on trying to get as much weight out while we're doing some of the other stuff. But before we put these bars in here, I want to make sure so there's a big like corner brace. But that was probably a good two, three hours of just cutting and grinding little spot welds and trying to get all the material out and everything. And I was like, there's no sense. I could literally made a whole video about removing those two pieces because there's so much time involved, but they just start chopping away and grinding away. And eventually you end up with this. So I still need to go through here and sand like all the little spot weld pieces. There's a couple little spots where actually the spot welds pulled through. So I'll weld them up because then you end up with like little, little holes in the uh, fender well and stuff like that. So I'll uh, clean all that up later, but you kind of just, the thing was not designed to be disassembled with all them spot welds, but 
got to try to get it out, save a few extra pounds, and that's what we're trying to do. So then we can add more weight with more cage. All right, so now that we got the first bend done, now it's just got to kind of bend back to straight to kind of go across there. Yep, so we'll take half of our degrees, come down for it, figure out our offset, put our line, bend it back the opposite way, and then we'll have our what people call a dog leg or <laughs> offset dog leg electrical yeah so terms more or less we just got to try to get it back to straight and then just decide on the distance here kind of because this will determine like how far off the tunnel we are and all of that so uh, that's where he's doing his guesstimation calculations and we'll figure it out from there now pretty much he's just measuring and trying to figure out how far down we want to make the bend so then when it goes back straight, that's how far the bar will set down into the car. So the further we go down off that bend, the further it'll end up down here. So we can tie into the bar about down in here, or we can slide it up. So you have some adjustment through here, but that's what we're trying to, trying to hit. So it keeps it nice and tight, but then still wraps up and over that real nice and kind of gives us the most room. Does that measurement look right, Lil? Let me show you again. Just verifying. Does this look right? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little mark on the die right there that he references each time. So now we'll be bending it back straight on both sides. I'm gonna bring it up here. So I'm using my die as a as a straight edge. So it's a quarter of an inch off right here down to the tube. So really it, it's the same here. Which out here it's gonna be the same at here. Just, and then this way you know the bends are staying square. And... Yeah, you're staying pretty much flat. You give or take a little bit, but it's gonna be pretty close. They have tools you can clamp on here and do the degrees and whatever but if your four is not exactly the same which mine's on rollers so it changes so this right here's just a quick reference for me to it's tell me whether i'm on or not there again i use my eye because close enough my other eye's crooked <laughs> that is a good eye nailed it hasn't failed me yet Still got it calibrated. So we were just talking about on this too, you can't necessarily go directly off of your angles because there's a certain amount of spring back in the material. So you actually gotta go past it. And like what he was talking about earlier, you kinda have to learn that depending on your material, your bender and all that stuff. Yep. And just like this, so 45 doesn't match the 90. Like I've got it on my die here where I've bent my 90s. I'm actually going to 105 degrees for a piece of chrome molly to get a true 90. I want to do a 45, like there would be half this 90. It's not the same as this uh, 15 degrees difference. So that's the reason you got to go through and calculate every one of them. And it's a lot of time, a lot of material. I'm not in it that much. You're just kind of like learning it. Yeah, yeah. you got to. It's like a tool and you know how that tool works and each time you use it so there's no precise exact so if you ever buy a bender or a different bender or whatever it is you kind of have to learn learn what it wants and how much it moves back and the different type of material because i assume molly springs back different than like mild steel yes. and all that stuff yeah, mild so. steel doesn't have near the spring back that this actually molly more. does as far as uh what's it what's the new the do -call? Do -call? I've, I've never been to any so i can't comment yeah. on that we've talked about trying to mess with that stuff but he's always used molly and that's widely accepted but a lot of people are starting to use doe call in these cages yeah that's what seems to be pretty popular because you can do both uh forms of welding Let's see if your eye looks close three sixteenths too tight come up just about a oh. Yeah, 
as you guys tell, we didn't notch or do anything there. We get this close, then cut it to length. And then he also has a tube notcher here that we'll be using. And that, uh, that notches around the tubing that's inside the car, but we'll get to that later. There's 47, see we're still, I can still bring it up. Oh, I see, you're just using the line on the floor to yeah, kind, kind of, of give it a flyness. reference. So, see, that's what I was talking about right there. So I go half of, actually, my bend here with the spring mm. back. It should have been right on it. It's, but it's not. It's not. So. But you're better off putting it back in and adding than going too far and trying yeah. to bring the pipe on the tube back. Thing nice with spring back on your molly. If you go half of that, usually you still have to go more. So yeah, it's so like it's a safe starting point. Over done it, so you can come in here. Kind of take a calculated guesstimation. Guesstimation and <laughs> see what you think. Getting pretty close. Yep, so it's starting to. Yep, and then it'll just sink down once we get it cut to length. Three and a half. Same three and a half. It's going to be right down close at the. down to the floor. Nice. So now that since we're long on both sides, you pick the side, kind of measure back, so then we can do our first fish mouth, and then the other one will land in the car. But still going off that, referencing the center point from where we originally chose, and then uh, coming over to each side of the car. And this is the front. I guess once you start making a choice, if the bar gets flipped, then you're... <laughs> yep, because like I said, the center floor pan is offset, so we're trying to maintain our center as best we can of our center of this which it's nothing we reference off of but just for our own peace of mind and then we carry it driver and passenger yeah yeah just so your measurements when you start flip-flopping your measurements come up and you start getting cut one side off the wrong way then you'll be short yeah because this is what we measured uh one inch difference from one side to the other and i couldn't tell you if the cage is actually centered it's pretty close within the body but i know that the motors factory motors everything are offset in the cars this point's when I try to start getting away from the uh, marker and actually do a hard scribe line so you have something to start following for reference when you get down to thing you're not going by a marker because a markers eighth inch thick to three sixteenths thick depending on who's smashed it and then you're just using other molly certain size molly slide over yeah, right this uh or into three quarters 058 wall 058 walls and chrome molly will always slide over the next next one down size down from it level across the car assuming everything's level which here we're coming off the jig and it is and stuff so we put the level in there i put my little angle finder across the level up the bar which in this way it turns out to be what four degrees angle so what he's talking about i'll show you guys in the car the main hoop isn't actually a square bar as you guys can see right there so this bar right here comes down at an angle so it's not just a square notch coming in here because you actually got to match that on both sides so i mean even though it's off by a little bit the fish mouth would have a huge gap in it if it didn't have that angle so that's what he's trying to match the bar to to the tube and I come in here just like this, right? Oh, see. So this is going to be my what I'm calling my front. front. <laughs> so then I want to make sure I get my angle and my bar when I'm looking in my angle over there. So I'll just take these right here, and it's a it's a drastic line. So I know that when I'm doing my fish mouth, it should be going this way from the reference, which is going to mm. overcut my bottom. Same thing here. To hear. So you're not actually end up cutting it so accidentally. Flip flop them, yeah, because everybody looks at these really. If you look at building a car, when you see them, this is a ladder bar cross the lower piece for yeah. the drive shaft. A little more extreme, but pretty close on them and stuff. In this car, it's like this, so it's easy to yeah get your fish mouth get switch. upside down where you're thinking. Especially when you start doing this, you twist and you turn around in the shop. Well, you just moved it on the table, yeah. yeah. Pretty soon it's upside down so see I come over here and I lift it like this and I know I'm putting my thing okay I got my half inch mark that's where I'll start with my marks I know my dimension 
on, my, on this particular two bender, I gotta still come off of this and I use a straight edge, which there's not a lot of edge here, but I'll put my straight edge across this, carry this just to make sure I've got this relatively close. I've done eyeball across this to my shaft and stuff, so it's... It's pretty close? Whatever a person feels they're comfortable with. Yeah, how far you wanna take it and make sure it's as precise as possible? Because all this is gonna do is it, the less you're off here is the tighter the notch will be and then the tighter the weld is to do, otherwise you'll end up with a gap below, above, to the right, left, whatever, a little bit. <laughs> So at four degrees angle, inch and a half, it actually, within an inch and five eighths, it overcuts it by about three sixteenths of an inch. From your? Yeah, see from here, mm. half inch, see how it's over it? Yeah. Something to note too, you don't have to have this machine. You actually did a lot of this on an old mill before. Yeah, I did it on my little mill over there using the same hole saw. I'm just chalking it up in the vise and Lock it up in the vise, it just sits differently within the vise. So you're working your angles up and down from flat to up in the air instead of... Yeah, hurt. most of the chassis you built, you did not have these two no. tools. <laughs> these tools came about when I was shutting down my shop. Uh, did they even build a car? Well, yeah, just that one. But these, yeah, that one has and then Mike's or the 55 might have been which is some of this yeah things. that's probably what you first did might yeah. have been but yeah these tools didn't come about and then changed my mind and <laughs> yeah so i'll uh, throw up a little video real quick this car that was actually on sick week that you guys probably seen he used the one that built it and then it went into a guy's kind of collection for a little bit and then another guy's and then now sean fink has it and he's racing it quite a bit but that was one of the chassis he built as well i guess i should say not just the chassis actually the whole car was built uh in his shop when he was doing a lot of race car and chassis work. this is my quick uh deeper came up, i just took a little bench adapted it put a flapper wheel on it and a wire wheel on the other side we know we're close. <clears throat> it's handy dandy. Too. Yep, get rid of the little bit of mill scale. You don't have to go very far. Even weld it over this stuff and it, it'll it'll create sometimes, I don't know what the difference is, like I'll get a little bit of contaminants like if you didn't clean it good, which I use acetone, and it'll pull up a little bit of oil and get a pin oil on the weld and stuff, but usually just a good clean, run over with sandpaper. And it, it, it don't take a lot, you're just knocking the edge off. Now let's see if it fits. Probably not. Maybe. Probably need a little bit of touch up, but you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. As long as it's not too loose. Oh, look at that. Oh, dang. You could tighten it up a little bit more. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty dang close though. How do we look? Well, we don't wanna get too close to the floor either because we gotta be able to reach up and weld in there. And Yep, our center is pretty much on our center where we designated it. So now it's just where we feel like we're we're close enough with we have to. If we want to keep removing here. a little material and then it can keep setting yeah, down. Sure. Well, we need to come up with a mark on the tube here, either off the jig and carry it in, so that we know here's a reference point. There's a reference point off the jig, and then you can measure down. You'll know that this tube is square. Is square with your part off of the jig up to this point, and start building up. So then when we do our other bar for our funny car, we know that. When this bar comes up right here, that it's whatever, 23. This one's gonna be 23. It's not, everything doesn't just stay crooked, but it's not gonna be much because you're only talking a short distance, but. Then you're not building like an angle like this right. into And your bar's from everything. here down to your frame. If whatever this one is, taking the bars on the bottom of the frame came up the same. These should still be, if they're 
close, yeah. Eight and a quarter. It's going to be eight and a quarter, maybe plus or minus small amounts. But it's not going to be like you got to start coming up with something for sure to carry your platform. And there again, this is a factory car. They have so much tolerance in a factory car. It's <laughs> yeah, crazy. nothing says that like where his right hand is at is equal to this side either. So no, on the jig it is now, but when they build them, no, these things are just floating down and they're zapping them and building them and they're, there's they're not as precise as what you a body shop they'll give you. There's a plus or minus of so much from side to side of the car and yeah, quarter panels wrong when you put it on the jig where you truly have a flat and you start measuring this stuff out, it'll drive you crazy because. So yeah, that's why we're not trying to measure here to there. We're trying to measure from this true surface to there. Yes, up, carry it, line, and then we can start plus and minus. Welcome back, another time jump on you guys, but we couldn't leave anything alone and kept working this bar down, down, actually clearance the tunnel a little bit to help it fit down as tight as we could to the floor. Main reason for that is that we didn't want this bar and that bar to hit exactly the same because then you end up having like two fish mouths that line up exactly and then you kind of have to notch the one and weld on top of the other bar that's on top of the other bar so on and so far so this will allow the upper bar to land somewhere in this area but you guys can see we kind of worked it out and then what i'll probably do is actually work some of this material up if i can and then weld it so then the main bar is actually welded to the chassis there as well so that creates kind of another like connection point and really stiffens up kind of the floor pan in the car uh, with that extra little part of weld so it takes some extra time you know clearancing and moving everything around but i think that's where we're at so i'm going to go ahead and uh, weld over there i already got that side tacked so get that in and then we can start building some more bars here or x in the door or whatever but uh that's the first main bar that's going in here for the 25.5 we're just going to go ahead i want this bar to be just up just a little bit well that's going to be too much i got to find me a little spacer or something to maybe if i go here right right there all right so now that the bar's sitting in place we'll go ahead and tack it go bars in there tacked up and now uh, we can just keep kind of making progress welding on them as as we go I'll add it like two three tacks on each one weld little portions and just as you're working on the car, you can keep just kind of welding it up. The, the spot down here is not gonna be the funnest weld, but not too bad either. We have some room to make that weld happen, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. You just gotta lay down and sometimes use a little plate to uh, see because the helmet's a little too thick, but otherwise it's going in there. So sometimes it's hard to get way down in there. So a little tip you can do is grab one of these little uh, masks and then you can lay a little bit closer to the ground and look up in there and try to get to those welds way up underneath. So. It's nice to have a tight cage, but then it's also a pain to weld it. All right, so that bar is completely welded all the way around on both sides. I went ahead and actually welded it all the way around so then I'm not adding bars and making it even tighter. So I had to put this tight little cup on this welding torch just to make it work so I could reach up in there and even that wasn't, uh, wasn't perfect. We have a really little torch, but I didn't swap it all out. So I was able to make it work there. So since those are all welded, got the diagram here. And if you look at this bar, the red and blue, it can be inch and 5 eighths 083, which is the same bar, size of bar, or like a two by three square. So since we're doing all round molly, we'll go ahead and get another stick of uh, the inch and 5 eighths, and then I'm gonna cut it so these bars will go from there to right about here. Add that in on both sides. And then I think the dash, that'll make the main kind of structure, and then we can start working on some like the funny, uh, funny car cage, and then I think to shut us out, we'll do the X's, but We'll just uh, keep adding bars as we go. The nice thing about this bar here, the dash bar, even some of the X is they're all straight. So we don't have to bend any more bars until we get to like the funny car hoop and stuff like that. So I'm uh, just gonna grab another piece of straight. And then my dad was saying about a half inch longer, get you where you wanna be with the cope. I'm gonna go about three quarters of an inch per side. So uh, I'm gonna go about an inch and a quarter extra. So I got about a quarter inch to clean up and uh, kind of make my fit what I want it to be. So it's right about 46, I'm gonna about 46 and a quarter. And then cope one side, put it in there, check where it's at, then start massaging the other side till it fits up nice. All right, so got the piece cut to 46 and a quarter. Made my little half inch mark right there. Line this up, everything's tight, so I'll go ahead and uh, cope it now. So there we 
There we go. Now we just gotta clean it up and uh, see how it fits. So actually not too bad. That sits right up in there. You can see about how much we got extra over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that half inch, cope it, and see where we end up. And almost. So like I said, ended up a little bit long. So I just gotta keep kind of slowly taking some away until it sits just right right there. So, But otherwise, ended up really, really, really close to it. Just a little, little long, which like I said, that's what we were shooting for. This is what I planned on happening. So that's perfect. We pretty much exactly what we need to pass cage inspection. And now we're good. Pretty flat in here. Not too bad. We'll take that, I think. I think I'm just going to take a couple measurements and make sure it is pretty square with the world. But more or less what I did is I just butted it up to the weld here. Went ahead and duplicated this side. Got it tacked in. There's a tack over there. Tack over there. Some tacks over there. Little weld. The weld over there on that side too. The rocker bars are pretty much sitting where they're going to be. I just uh, went ahead and kept them tight up against this bar. Give me the most amount of room to weld down tight to this bar here. So that'll work out well. So what I'm actually going to do now while I got the uh, notcher out is go ahead and notch the dash bar. So I'm going to take the old bar that went across the back of the cage between the main hoop. If you guys remember me cutting this thing out in the other video and cut it to length, notch it with the inch and five eighths notch. And then this should be able to go in. So let's go ahead and get a dash bar made. So again, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just measure from right here over to here. Cause I want that part to go, whoa. Gotta watch out for that pedal, hey? What I'm gonna go ahead and do is set this bar in here. Kinda, so that's about where it's gonna lay right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that again, add that half inch to each side and go ahead and cope them and see how it lays in there. There it is. After getting rid of that little thing that was in my way, dash bar popped right in there. No problem, use these little clamps kind of hold it in place while I tack it. And otherwise the dash bar is pretty much good to go. And then I'll end up welding all my like ECU mount and uh, EGT mount and everything off this and the wiring will come down. So I'll use that dash bar probably to hold like all that type of stuff, all the electronics and all that. So we'll see, maybe that's pretty high up in there. Maybe I'd come off here. Not 100% sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but that's kind of the plan or some sort of that type of plan. All right, so multiple hours later and we got almost everything welded. There's still a few spots still yet to hit. Took the handy dandy hole saw, went ahead and knocked the hole right here in the floor. So the bar will come right down onto this tube here. Uh, drilling a hole in tubes isn't always a bad thing. So then it has a place for kind of the weld to, the weld gases to expand and contract. All right, everyone, so where we left off last time, my dad ended up jumping in and knocking out a ton of bars on this thing, so it's pretty awesome. The fun and car cage is almost there. He actually even got this part done, but we'll leave this out until it goes something, it goes in something like that, but we're gonna go ahead and leave that out so it's easier to crawl in and out of but I've been coming over a few hours a day and trying to knock out the welds on this thing after work, before work, around work, all that type of stuff. So I got uh, most of this all welded up in the front. There's still some welding I need to do in the back. There's some welding in some tight areas I need to get to up underneath back in here some. So I've just been crawling all over this thing and trying to do a bunch of welds. And you know, each weld, I think it's like four and a half inches on like the inch and five eighths. You gotta go around, but you're doing that in like, you know, maybe one or two inch little increments and you gotta move them and adjust your body position and all that type of stuff. So been working on that, but everything is starting to come together. I know the videos haven't been as often as I would like, but we have been working on this thing. Work has been crazy with the new business and all of that type of stuff, which I can complain about. So sometimes you gotta take care of some work. So we've been working on this as we've kind of both had some time. He's been knocking out some things and I come over and weld on it. He actually also got some other bars done. I'll show you guys those real quick. So here is like the lower X bar that needs to go in somewhere right in about like that. And then there's the kidney bar, the upper X bars right here that goes right here to here. I mean, you guys got a good firsthand look at how we bent the main bar. And then I did some straight bars coping. And that's what a lot of this is. But this bar has a good bend to it. This bar has a good bend to it. But straight, 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 straight. A lot of straight stuff. So those aren't too bad. It definitely takes some skill with the bender though once you get into these bent pieces and all that type of stuff. 
But I'm over here late on a Saturday night. I'm gonna jump in here, knock out another probably hour, hour and a half of welding, then go home and knock out this video for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy these cage videos. Hopefully in the next one, we are really, really close to completing this 25.5 cage. And then we can move on to the maybe the front end and uh, rear end, shorten that thing up. I did get some rear end housing uh, ends for it so we could get the rear end back in this thing, but I'm waiting on trying to figure out what wheels and tires and all that type of stuff. So a little back and forth on parts, the engine's in process, I've been, the cams ordered, all that type of stuff. So hopefully some updates coming on that here soon in the next few videos. Otherwise guys, I appreciate you watching. Hope you're enjoying the Camaro build. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.